a brand new, fresh new run, man. A fresh new run. We, of course, are naming our rival. We lost to a jump scare. We lost to a jump scare battle. We lost to a surprise. So we're just gonna name him Surprise. Oh my God. That is unfortunately terrible um, for early game stuff. That is a really bad special attack IV. Pretty much can't get worse than that. And a D plus in attack. Now here, chat, this is the most important encounter so far. This encounter can be a Badoo. If we get a Badoo here, we are guaranteed to get past Surge. That is massive. That is a massive encounter right there. Surely it is Gligar this time, dude. Okay, why not is incredibly cringe but also incredibly troll. We got so far in that last run that now with all of the new info we'll actually get to like use and study to help prepare. Like I won't have to spend two hours head casing about which Pokemon certain gym leaders might have and might not. Like now I can prepare for things like Koga and Blaine and that Brennan fight and the May fight. And like, there's so much I can actually prepare for properly now to where unless I'm, getting horrible encounters or just using bad strats, like there's really no reason to lose runs. Like after we beat Surge, there really shouldn't be a lot of reasoning as to us losing runs unless our encounters are just that bad. Should be pretty free here. We're just a magnitude, basically one shot it. Onyx takes another big hit. Water gun should be enough to kill. Bullpix comes in. We go for bubble, kill the Archon. Tank the hit, Oshawott clutches. GG. Okay, so our Gyarados is gonna be ass. Oh my God, it's gonna be bad for the SSN too. Oh, just a tragic Magikarp. Maybe we'll get lucky and find a shiny again, you know? We are hoping for a Swablu here. If we can get a Swablu here, Erica is a guaranteed free easy dub. No sweating, no nothing. Just so easy, so easy, so free. Let's see, Swablu, any Swablus? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is good. Uh, oh, yes. This makes me very happy. I'm not killing it, dude. Why, why are you guys saying run away from it and kill it? I'm not going to do that, man. Get a little Chin Chow action here, which we always name the run. I believe this is the run. I have no idea, actually. I want to say it's 17, right? We now switch out into a lot of orange. Try to go for a knockoff. That's fine. Why not comes in. We're going to go for mirror coat. Oh, just kidding. Now we're going to go for mirror coat. Bang. Mirror coat again. We're going to destiny bond. Easy peasy. GG. Wobbuffet there is like a free kill. So we'll definitely have to keep Wobbuffet in mind for a couple of these fights. If we run into something that has to attack, Wobbuffet can be legitimately a god. It's got to be like a Lediba, right? If it hatched that fast, it's got to be awful. Never mind, it's cracked. Well then, <laughs> well that's not good. <laughs> well, that's actually bad. This isn't good for us. I was pogging, but then I realized this is not pog. We already get a Trico guaranteed in the run. That is a little bit tragic, but it is what it is. I mean, I guess having two Sceptiles in certain fights I guess could be good. Maybe. Big Surge fight. The game really opens up to us after this. We'll be able to get some actually like, we'll make our Pokemon actually gross and stupid strong once we get to sell it on. And then we'll be able to fight Erica. But for now, it's Surge time. Ooh, he's actually smart and switched. He's actually never done this before. He's actually smart. We outspeed here. So we set up another layer of toxic spikes. We take whatever hit this is. We have good natural special defense, so we should be able to take at least one hit. This will probably bring us down to red health. Oh, we got a crit. Well, that's whatever.
Huge dub. Huge dub against Surge. That was pretty close. We got unlucky and we got lucky. Raichu going for a second nasty plot was great. Him switching out of, of Pinchurch in turn one was not great. Vikavolt getting a crit was not great. But the rest of it went about as I expected. So that was pretty good. Ooh, okay. This is actually fine though. We were talking about this earlier. Politoed went huge for us in the last run. Like it was massive. So this is actually fine. Especially because we already have an, Alt on, uh, an Altaria to handle Erica. So this is great. The only weird thing that could happen here is if Rillaboom switches out with U-turn immediately for some reason. The AI has never done that when I've done this fight like this, but you never know. Okay, there's one Dragon Dance. Get another one now that we're faster. There's three boosts. Might be able to get to plus six based on the defensive investment we did. The Citrus Berry is about to kick in on the next turn. So this is probably the best we've ever been at this point in the fight with Altaria. So the defense investment was definitely worth it. Uh, we should be able to dual wing beat most everything from this point out. The only thing that can't take a plus six dual wing beat, I th think is Mega Venusaur. I think that's the only thing that doesn't get, well, no, I think Electrode can actually take it. But Superior gets shredded here. Superior doesn't even stand a chance here. There's the Focus Ash. Second hit of Dual Wing Beat comes in. He's gonna Mega Evolve into Mega Venusaur. We're not normally plus six by this point, so pretty sure this does kill. Let's see, this is a good test. Oh God, yeah, that's plenty. That plus six goes huge. We're normally only like plus three, plus four. Meganium comes in, same story, different Pokemon absolutely shredded. The only reason we prepared any other Pokemon was specifically just in case we got an unfortunate critical hit somewhere in there. Altaria makes this fight so incredibly free. This is why I was so excited. <laughs> when we get a Swablu, this is why my heart starts racing. Cause it's so fucking free, dude. <laughs> It's so free! Any like really refreshing Joler spam for the culture boys? Any Jolers? Yeah. Yeah, give me those Jolers. We haven't really forgotten about anything. We know the movesets, we know what we're up against. So really the biggest thing that's a question mark is do we one shot here? I don't know if Aqua Tail actually one shots. The assumption is that it will. I have a feeling it might live this. So let's see. Okay, cool. That's a very good sign. Why didn't it go into Rotom? I mean, yeah, we just go Aqua Tail here. Let the Drill Peck hit. If we survive, we hit it with Aqua Tail and then Aqua Jet. Nice. Aqua Tail plus Aqua Jet, I think might be enough here. Let's see. How much does Aqua Tail do? Oh yeah, should be enough. Nice. Oh, this is even, this is perfect. What are they doing? Right, I'm just gonna Aqua Jet. <laughs> I'm gonna break your focus, Sash. Like, yeah, this is fine. It's a max attack. Adamant, that is a, an easy kill there. And then the Rotom comes back in and we can kill it with literally anything we want. Well, we're just gonna go Mach Punch for pure safety reasons. Very clean Giovanni one. I don't know what his thinking was. I don't know why he didn't send in Rotom to fight my water type. That was very nice of him. I will take that every day of the week. It's about to be a big dub against our rival, dude. Against our rival. Every time in this fight, no matter what, we go with Volt Switch here. He switches out. Electivire comes in, surely. Yep. Oh, he stayed in. Perfect. Perfect. This is literally the Pokemon Golem is for. So, so we're gonna go dual wing beat. Nice. Does this kill? I don't think so. It'll get close. Ooh, the sleep powder there is rough. All right, Pimpod comes in. First impression. Okay. Why would you go into Azumarill here? Let's go Liquidation. This is going to do about half. There we go. And now we just Volt Switch because he cannot stay in against literally anything. In fact, we should have Thunderbolted and then Volt Switched, but that's, this is also fine. All right, we Thunderbolt this time because we don't need to switch out anymore. We'll Volt Switch when the Dermanitan comes in, but Volt Switch again. And then Infernape's gonna finish off Venusaur. GG. A little closer than we would have liked, but felt relatively in control that whole time. Again, three tries for anyone that isn't listening or just now getting here. Three tries for this fight because it is RNG nonsense. Because Masquerain has Intimidate, it activates competitive on Gothitelle, which gives it a plus two special attack boost, which is extremely cringe. We are going to protect because the Incineroar always goes for fake out on this first turn. 
So we don't want to accidentally get destroyed by Gothitelle here. So we protect. And we hope that Masquerade goes for Bug Buzz. Okay, that's cringe. If it goes for a move on Masquerade, that's also cringe. Wow, extreme cringe. Again, horrible RNG turn one. Now again, we need Masquerade to go for Bug Buzz on Gothitelle. Because we can one-shot Incineroar just fine. I am annoyed. <laughs> I hate this fight so much. <laughs> Okay, big burn there. That's actually big. That is nice. Please attack Primarina, Sceptile. I'm begging you. Please attack Primarina. Like, don't be weird, dude. Just just attack Primarina. Use your Giga Drain or your Mega Drain or whatever you have here. Okay, thank you. Oh my god. If Houndoom attacks me, it's whatever. But hopefully it attacks Sceptile. That'd be great. Okay, I think we don't die because we have special defense. That is all because we invested a little bit into special defense. If we didn't invest in the special defense there, we're probably dead. There's the stance change. It's going for an attack. Attack me, attack me, attack me, attack me. Yes, idiot, you fool. Beautiful. Nice, good job, x -Plowed. Yes, the right target. Oh yes, it kills it too. Okay, we actually won't even need three tries. We got this. This is now free. All right, now we just double into Age's Lash. Oh, and it's not even going for King's Shield. GG shitter. <laughs> Yes! Oh my god. First try, dude. Oh my god. Politoed, so nice. Politoed is... Oh, I love Politoed. It's the goat, dude. Giovanni 2. Last big fight before Sabrina. We obviously outspeed here. This thing is slow as hell, so... Awesome. Oh, we go liquidation for damage. Yeah, because it goes for Swords Dance. And because Joler is dead, we have to get this damage. Nice. Good prediction, dudes. Oh, it's big! That's big right there, boys. Ooh, that's a big kill. Okay. Okay. We are in this. We are in this. That is huge. No paralysis. Optimal. Optimal. No paralysis. Oh, that's so good. No paralysis on both hits. The RNG in my favor. No paralysis. Ah. Uh, okay, it's fine. Clutch. Incredible. Incredible work from Galissapod. Just incredible. Last Pokemon, Exodrill, has the Focus Sash. Stealth Rock takes out the sash scald g fucking g excadrill oh my god it is just beautiful it's a beautiful sight oh and that is giovanni 2 everybody and we got the crit for the culture we love that our lead moves here are cross poison and iron head on the hatterene we have to make sure the hatterene dies otherwise things get weird this might one shot i'm just iron heading just in case Okay, that is why we have two Pokemon up front to make sure this thing dies. Okay, Mystical Fire here is actually good. That is best case scenario for us. Expanding Force would have hurt Joler really badly. So that's actually good. Okay, the fact this is Crawdon is really good. Mostly because Crawdon can't really one-shot either of us. It also doesn't have Trick Room. So we don't have to worry about Trick Room getting set up right here, which means we can freely set up Toxic Spikes and then we can go for a Protect here on Joler. So now anything that switches in is going to have to get poisoned. Wow, it's going for Mystical Fire. Oh, that's... Oh, what a perfect move! The perfect Protect! Oh, that was huge! We go another set of Toxic Spikes. I think we're just going to go for damage, because Joler dying isn't a huge deal at this point. The fact that it went into Crawdont makes this much easier for us. We're going to break the Sash on Crawdont. Now anything that switches into the battle is going to get Toxic Poison on their side. Mystical Fire is going to come in. That's fine. Knock Off does suck. Unfortunately, we do lose our leftovers with Joler, but he's going to die soon anyways, so it's not really a huge deal. Now we're going to go Knock Off on Indeedee. Wow, that actually killed. Huge. I didn't think that was going to one-shot. That's actually big, because I think this is going to try to kill my Gyarados, so this is actually huge. If it kills Joler, he oh, it went for Scorponok. Interesting. That's actually not horrible. It's either going to be Ursaluna, it's going to be Gardevoir, or it's going to be Porygon. That's all that's left. It was Gardevoir. This is also okay because we can outspeed. So what I need to do here is we need to U-turn on the Crawdont. No, we need to kill the Gardevoir. We need to kill the Gardevoir because we don't want to let Trick Room come up. Yeah, Gardevoir has Trick Room, which means we have to go Poison Jab, and we have to go Iron Head. This will do about half. Oh, it actually did way more! Wow! That is actually way more than I thought it would do. This is going to kill Infernape. Again, this is relatively fine. 
It's not... I don't love it. <laughs> I would have liked to keep Infernape alive. Unfortunately, Gardevoir coming in there. You know, I probably could have U-turned with Infernape and then just let Iron Head kill from there. That would have been a better play. I could have U-turned and just swapped into a lot of orange. Now it's Ursaluna, which is good for us because Ursaluna is just going to protect this turn. We can Sacred Sword the Crawdont and we can get a free Dragon Dance here with Joler because Ursaluna just goes for protect, I'm pretty sure. Actually, it didn't. Just kidding, which I'm very confused about. I guess because it already got poisoned. Okay, high horsepower is fine. Again, this is not a huge deal. Joler getting that um, Dragon Dance off is actually big here. That should allow us to kill Porygon. Okay, so we have to Mega Evolve and immediately go Drain Punch here on Porygon. And then we have to go Aqua Tail. We have to make sure Porygon dies. The only way we can really lose here is if Porygon lives. So we have to hope that Mega Evolved Sceptile plus plus one Aqua Tail stab max attack. That's not gonna be enough. Okay, this is gonna get weird then. This is gonna get really weird. Oh, this is going to get weird, weird. Okay, that's relatively fine. We have to protect here with Gex. Give me some good luck here. Come on. Come on, Polygoat. Come on, Polygoat. Unfortunately, the run is over. GG, we lost. Wow, that's crazy. Was a good run. That's tragic. Honestly, this game sucks, man. Can't wait to do five hours of the beginning of the game again. God, this is gonna be so much fun, man. Gonna be a blast. I just cannot wait, dude. The fact that Porygon 2 with Eviolite can do that is just unreal, by the way. The fact that it can tank a plus one max attack, one level disadvantage, Aqua Tail from a Gyarados, and also a Mega Sceptile Drain Punch, with max attack investment is kind of crazy. If I just U-turn with monkey balls, man, instead of going for poison jab, just should have U-turned with monkey balls and used iron head with Joler. Uh, it's okay, man, next run, next run. You know what, it's okay. Just next run, just next run, just next run, just next run, just, just, just do another one, just do another one, dudes. All right, anyone want to be the Snivy? Anyone want to have the Snivy? Unfortunately, claiming the Pokemon doesn't work like that for starters, Adrian. Although I don't think you've ever been a starter on any of these runs. So I think we can actually do that regardless. Hey guys, so like I didn't want to cut out all of the early game of this run, but at the same time, I know you guys have seen it what feels like a hundred times now. I know that I have seen it way too much. <laughs> so I wanted to at least include a lot of the, uh, you know, early stages of the run just because a lot of these actually ended up being pretty good fights. So I thought it'd be good to at least do like maybe some live commentary over it uh, as it's sped up in front of you. As you saw earlier, I got absolutely blasted by Bugsy the first time I fought him there, so I had to refight him. It was easy peasy. And then, of course, these first couple gym leaders are always free, so not really a concern. You can see me just plowing through the uh, sailor fights there on the SS Anne. This surge fight was actually pretty close, despite the fact that I did find a way to get some toxic spikes down. It was a really unfortunate paralysis from the discharge, but eventually, like, we did make our way through. It got really close here at the end when Lantern got taken out, and it was kind of just down to Roshi, but no paralysis from the Thunderfang. Roshi hits a dig on the bolt end, hits another one on the Raichu. We end up clutching. A little close, but we made it work. We got a Cyndaquil from an egg, which ended up being super huge. I mean, it's my favorite Pokemon. So, well, Typhlosion's my favorite, but you, you know what I mean. I was super happy to get this, obviously. We named it Swakoodle. We also caught a Squaruppy, which was also huge for the run. You'll see that down the line. Uh, and then we had the Erika fight, and the Erika fight went pretty much as good as it could for not having Swablu. We had a Dodrio, which went massive. Uh, and then it... <laughs> It was basically just a sweep from there, I'll be honest. Uh, Typhlosion with the uh, Flaming Soul-like ability that just gives it priority with fire moves when it's at full health made this really easy. And it just, as you see, it just flamethrows everything one time. GG, easy, go next. Erica, bit of a pushover at this point, thankfully. It took only 24 runs to get there. Uh, Giovanni won. Pretty standard Giovanni won. Nothing crazy happened here. Uh, I will say, unfortunately, the Kangaskhan does get a paralysis here. Kind of drove me crazy because as much as it was nice to Dragon Dance and get this Aqua Tail off, it didn't work against the Honchkrow. I had to actually like play the game for the rest of the fight, which I didn't love, but I mean, we made it work. Again, Squakool comes in. I actually had a super hard read on the will -Wisp there too. I don't know if you caught that. Super hard read on the will -Wisp. That was great. And then it kind of just did work from there. We got a really nice burn on the Honchkrow, which made things way easier. 
and ended up taking itself out after like another turn there. Infernape takes us out, but I mean, Talonflame, Gale Wings, Dual Wing Beat, it's the same thing we've done every single time we've had Talonflame. I got my ass handed to me against the Marowak because I'm a shitter. Had to go back and kill him, obviously. Uh, and then we had the fight against Chuck, which I usually don't include in these videos, but I wanted to include it for the storyline here, I guess. But we gave him the Dickens and then we went against our rival, which it was a little close, I guess. I honestly, the team I brought in, I put way too much faith in a camera up to be a good Pokemon, especially during this run. I, it, I don't know why I kept bringing Camera up to fights. I, I simply should have had other things. I just, I kept thinking Camera up would do something, but as you saw, we, we made it work. For this fight, okay. The Masquerain, thankfully, even though it got faked out, the Masquerain actually got the kill on Incineroar in one hit, which was nice. And then it actually survives the Psychic, which was insane. Stays alive for another turn, which was just like huge for us, because then I could pretty simply just Poison Fang, kill the Primer in one hit, pre excuse me, kill the Primarina in one hit. Obviously it gets taken out there, but it does so much to Gothitelle. This pissed me off from the Sceptile. I was so annoyed here, because I'm like, okay, why did you Mega Drain the thing that was one shot when you could have Focus Blasted the thing that can like hard wall me basically i can't do anything to it with drapion but whatever man so i just like end up sitting here letting septile just like take the hits because <laughs> i'm like dude like fuck you <laughs> so x pod comes out scorpio is just kind of there like i'm like i don't know what to do with this thing i'm just kind of like here for the vibes gets taken out hyper voice does massive damage there it actually went huge and i thought at this point that i maybe was gonna lose and i'd have to like redo the fight for you know the, the best of three whole situation we were doing for this fight uh, but Pepe NPC comes in, takes a Dark Pulse, and I'm like, surely I lose here, right? 1v1 against Asia Slash, there's no way. Like, I basically just started spamming Protect and Scald here and was super speeding because I'm like, there's no way I'm going to beat this. And somehow he ends up being dead. I don't know, man. I'll take it, though. It, it was it was actually massive. And then the last one that I speed up through here in this run is the Giovanni 2 fight, because, again, we've seen this many times at this point. You get Stealth Rock down to make sure that Excadrill gets the uh, Focus Sash taken out later. And then you bring something that can set up the rain or any other weather to get rid of the Sandstorm. That nukes his team's ability to do much. You get anything with Sucker Punch that has a good attack stat. His, uh, what is that called? Poltegeist? That gets taken out easy peasy. And then a huge crit, huge liquidation crit on the Garchomp there at, at, that basically sealed it. The Kangaskhan actually kind of clapped my ass cheeks here. I'm sorry, I'm speaking ahead of what actually happened in the footage, but it clashed my ass cheeks. <laughs> but thankfully, even though Bobby Dial does basically nothing there, Gregalina, I mean, Glissapod's just the goat. I don't know what to tell you. Glissapod's just the goat. And it just hard clutches. And we end up getting to beat Giovanni 2 without any issues. Okay, Giovanni 2 done. Little close for comfort, but overall, I'll take it. Okay, Ready? here we go. Full confidence. With any luck, if we are actually lucky, she will go for Mystical Fire with Ndidi against Scorpio. That is if we are lucky. I don't think that is what's going to happen, but if it does happen, that is good for us. That is very good. Poison Jab, Double Edge. I'm very curious how much this does. Yeah, yeah, that's great damage. Okay, good to know. Easy kill on Hatterene. Guaranteed easy kill. Okay, Hyper Voice is... Kind of the worst case scenario there, but it's fine. Okay, Gardevoir comes in second. This is also fine. We once again can go Poison Jab and Double Edge. In fact, Double Edge might kill it. Does this kill? <sighs> Almost. Damn. I went Muscle Band instead of Focus Sash. That's good to know, dude. That's two Trick Room setters down. We have to deal with another Hyper Voice, which does suck, but we don't die. Okay, okay, this is good. This is actually good. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, we need to go for Brick Break and we need to go for Knock Off. Okay, Evil Light's off. Does Brick Break kill? It's so good that it went into Porygon here. That's, okay, that doesn't kill, but this is okay. This is okay. Porygon's gonna set up Trick Room, but we have Pokemon that can stall, kind of. So we just need to stall out a couple turns of Trick Room with some of our Pokemon. Okay, simple thing, we just, we just protect with both Pokemon. I think that's the smartest play here. Brick Break on Porygon 2. And 
I will swap? There's no way it reads this. The, the AI would actually be cheating if it made this read. Kill it. Just kill it. Just kill it. Just kill it. <sighs> oh, that's going to hurt really bad. That's going to hurt really bad. We have a lot of special defense investment, though. Oh, the teleport there is also... Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Trick Room has two more turns. It's going for Facade on Joel and Expanding Force. We did Intimidate the Ursa Luna. We might... After that Intimidate, be able to handle one Facade. Like, what is this battle not winnable without at this point? Joeler has Intimidated, which is good. It's done its job there. We Protect. We try for Double Protect. We swap into Gregalina. Damn it, no Double Protect. That's after an Intimidate, by the way. That is after an Intimidate. That is a broken Pokemon, by the way. Okay, well, Gregalina maybe... Yeah, Gregalina at least survives that. So that's something to work with, at least. There is no more Trick Room on the field, and they have no way to currently set up Trick Room. So I think we just go Scald on Ursa Luna this turn, and then I need to make sure that Ursa Luna dies. Rain Boosted Scald. It's already taken a little bit of damage. Does this one shot. Yes, okay. There's the Expanding Force. I probably should have just protected, but this is, I think, winnable. I think I have to go for damage here on Ndidi. I think that's my way out of this. Okay, they're going Hyper Voice and Knock Off. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. I know that this kills Crawdont. I know that this isn't going to kill Ndidi. Okay, Mystical Fire is great. That's honestly fine. I don't mind losing Special Attack there. Expanding Force only works in terrain. I didn't know that. <gasps> that's so good. Hyper Voice this turn with Pepe NPC and Protect for safety with Sceptile. This kills Porygon. It does chip damage to Ndidi. Yes! Yes! GG, actually GG, actually GG. Finally, oh my God, dude. It's been so long since we got past Sabrina again, dude. Oh! I am shaking, I'm shaking, I'm actually shaking. Her 4.0 fight is infinitely worse. How can that possibly be infinitely worse? Dude, that fight is already just brutal. Chat, this is the first time that we're going to get to use info for every, well, at least the next like, five big fights. This team is, relatively speaking, all things considered, pretty free. Because his Drapion only has two moves. <laughs> Same thing with his Swellow. And his Toxtricity dies guaranteed to a Bulldoze from Mega Sceptile. It also one-shots Dragapult with Breaking Swipe. So Sceptile and Jolteon go absolutely huge in this fight. Battle Bond Greninja is a threat as long as it actually gets to do things. If we make sure it doesn't get to do things, we're fine. It should be the last time we did it. I mean, last time we did it blind. We didn't even know what he had. All we had was a sticky note of what he could potentially have. We did it blind last time. Now that we know what we're up against, this fight should be free. The next big fight beyond that, or I guess before that, is the fight against Brendan at the Safari Zone. Metagross as his lead with Clear Body. He sets up Stealth Rock with this thing. Meteor Mash, Earthquake, Explosion. This thing is pretty nasty. I do think my Dragapult will be able to do some significant damage there though. Just a reminder, wideouts to random trainers. They count as wideouts. They do not end the run. It is just the bigger fights. Why can't I hurt it? Hello? Why can't I? This is driving me crazy. There we go. Because it has the thing, dude. It has the thing. That's why. Oh, and it's another ice type. Cool. All right, GG. All right, it's what out. That did nothing. Wait, what? Why is that doing nothing? Oh, my God. Okay, sunlight's out. Swakoodle. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. Fun fight. Fun fight. Actually, fun fight, dude. GG. What a dumb ass whiteout to have. What a stupid, dumb whiteout. All to a stupid ass Tropius. Oh my God, dude. All right, whatever. Dude, I'm taking way too many whiteouts to these stupid fucking trainers, dude. Oh my God, man. I, I, I actually cannot stand having to do fights after Sabrina. I, just, I hate fighting the trainers. It drives me crazy. And we're giving Ice Beam back to goddamn Politoed, dude. Before I forget. Because that is killing me not having it. I missed Scorch Sand somehow. That's cool, man. That's really cool, man. I white out to him again! Holy shit. It goes to my boy, Darren. Two Pokemon. See, look at this. Chat, look at this. Look at the problem here, okay? 
Do you see why I'm upset? Why now does the trainer have a level 56 fucking weeping bell? Two Pokemon and they're level 56. Like it agonizingly painful. Just agonizing. Like, look, it's free. Look, it's actually just free. It's the dumbest. I don't know why the Radical Red devs decided to do it this way. But like, it's just so dumb. All right, chat, here we go. Brendan fight. Just right into it. I've already set up the strat for it. I'll explain it as we go, but this fight's free. Okay, this fight's actually incredibly free. All we do is play smart here and we're fine. This thing has air balloon, doesn't matter. We literally just click flamethrower and it kills it because Squapoodle is the goat. Bang. Sceptile comes in. Now you might think, gee, would you want to like switch out against this thing? No, man, because we're still at full health. So we get a free flamethrower here before we'd even have to switch, which is going to do like half health at least. It's going into earthquake, dude. So we just go into X3 and now Gale Wings dual wing beat. So free, easy clap. For x we protect just to see what it's going for. Thankfully, because it's going for Boom Burst, we U-turn. We go into the Jiver. Boom Burst doesn't affect us. We go protect to see again. It's going to be Shadow Ball, I believe. There's the Shadow Ball. We U-turn. Massive damage. <laughs> just extreme damage all around. We go into Scorpio. Assuming it goes for Boom Burst. There it is. So we once again... <laughs> Do you see the play here, chat? <laughs> oh, it's going for Boom Burst. Oh, we just go back in the Jiver. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's still going Boom Burst. Oh, if we just U-turn once again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> look at that, dude. And now, Mega Sceptile comes in. Three Pokemon left to go. Metacham comes in. It's going to be going for Ice Punch. So we're going to Mega Evolve, go for Protect. Whatever it does, it locks itself into it. Close combat. Perfect. So because it goes into that, we once again switch right into the Jiver. And because it's locked into it, it has to either swap out or, I mean, it has to swap out. So all we do is just click Dragon Darts. Whatever comes in next has to eat a Dragon Dart. Or Gardevoir, I guess. I forgot that Gardevoir comes in, but whatever. We use U-Turn. It does massive damage. Like, that's insane. <laughs> it's insane that it does that much. We simply let Swakoodle get taken out here. Excellent. So free. Did you see why I said this fight was so free, chat? So rather than you turning here, because we don't want to take an Aqua Jet here, we go into Pepe NPC. This thing has really bad special defense, so we can hit it with Scald and it does quite a bit of damage. Oh my God. It, I mean, come on. <laughs> Last Pokemon is Metacham. It's going Psycho Cut. That guarantees that it's done because it can't hit me and it's locked into Psycho Cut. So also look at this damage here, chat. Look at the damage. Unreal, dude. <laughs> With Wicked Blow plus Sniper, Wicked Blow is guaranteed to be a critical hit, and Sniper makes critical hits do so much more. This thing is an absolute monster. I am very excited. This is the Pokemon I plan to bring for, since I've been told there is a Mewtwo, I, this is my Mewtwo killer. This Pokemon, th th this move right here is what I was talking about earlier. Double Iron Bash, dude. Hits twice, can cause flinches, and it's a steel type move with 60 power. So like, I feel like this is gonna be our best bet of handling the Mammoth Swine, especially with our defense being, you know, like high enough. Again, this is for the, the, the double back-to-back -back later. Koga fight, only the second time we've ever gotten to fight Koga during this challenge, but the first time we did it, we beat him blind. So now we've got the strats. This Swellow only knows two moves, Boom Burst and U-Turn. It is very likely going to go for U-Turn or just hard switch out into Toxtricity. So we simply just hit it with Volt Switch immediately. Toxtricity comes in. Oh, Dragapult, that's even better. Do a good chunk of damage there. This is a super free switch in for Sceptile. We outspeed when we Mega Evolve, we kill it with Break Swipe, guaranteed. Easy clap. So we can't let Sceptile die quite yet because we need it to be alive for the Toxtricity kill. Could go Cross Poison. It could go Wicked Blow. I don't know exactly what it's going to go for. I think Wicked Blow hits through Protect. So just in case, we are going to go into Scorpio, because that's really all it's here for, is to troll the Drapion until something else can come in and kill it. Okay, it is Wicked Blow. Again, our goal here with our Drapion is very simply to do, like, 
half this thing's health, maybe just enough to where something else can come in and kill it. It runs out of wicked blows eventually too, so it's really not like a huge deal. I'm gonna go for first impression here for damage. Wicked blow comes in. It's probably gonna need about half our health, maybe a little more to be honest with you. Yep, we emergency exit and we kill it. This is probably gonna be Greninja next, I imagine. So we don't know exactly what Greninja's going for. So as much as I'd like to be able to U-turn here, we're just gonna hard swap into Gregolina. We're gonna first impression and probably kill it in one hit. We're gonna go for first impression. Excellent. He's probably gonna go back into Swellow. Okay, he's going straight into Toxtricity. We mainly just wanna get an idea of what it's doing. Okay, it's going for boomers. We are going to play it smart. We're just gonna go for damage with Sucker Punch and let it kill Gregolina. Sceptile comes in. This guaranteed one shots it with Bulldoze. GG, this fight is basically over at this point. He only has two Pokemon left. Excelgore comes in. It can outspeed me. Make sure that Sludge Bomb, it is Sludge Bomb. We don't have our thing that can actually swap into a Sludge Bomb anymore, but the Jiver has no role left in this fight. So it, it just doesn't even matter. <laughs> We'll just send in the gyro to do what it wants to do. I, I imagine we're not going to get much of a chance to do damage here because it's going to go for... Well, actually, it doesn't have anything super effective. Oh, perfect. We're going to get a free kill on Swallow. This thing, yeah, this thing has U-turn, Bug Buzz, like Super Power and Sludge Bomb. So the Jiver actually just is going to get a free dub here because if this doesn't kill, we just Sucker Punch. GG, dude. Good Koga fight, everybody. I told you it was free. You guys are like, I don't know, dude, it is Koga. <laughs> It's funny, it actually went a little different than I thought it would, but overall, still very clean. I'll take it. A little bit of a May fight for the culture, for the vibes. All right, so Soul Rock leads against our Mega Sceptile. We simply go for a Mega Evolve Bullet Seed, which as long as it hits three times, we should guarantee kill it. Even twice might kill it as well. Not quite. It only hits twice. Goes for Explosion. Uh, does that kill us? That's a little unfortunate, but that is why we had an entire team of Pokemon ready to go, just in case. Uh, I don't know what's going to come in next. We tank the Earthquake here. Ooh, ooh, critical hit. Wait, it's not a crit. What? That's not a crit? Wow, that's actually kind of insane. Okay, I got a Giga Drain and hope that this does good damage. Is that enough? I don't think that's enough. I think, we, I think we're dead here. Should be easy enough for the Jiver to come in. Dragon Darts kills Manectrike. Okay, Manectrike does not actually have anything super effective here, I don't think, but it might use Switcheroo, which would be a little interesting. But if I just Dragon Darts, I think we're fine. It goes for Thunderbolt. That's just nothing. We're fine. We are going to go for a U-turn here, just for damage purposes. This might bait out the Blaziken. Okay, cool. Bait a little bit, bait, 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 which we're currently still faster than. Do a lot of damage with Volt Switch. It's gonna likely go for I don't even know really, but Pepe NPC can go in, get the rain in there in case it was going for a fire move. Flare Blitz should be nuked at this point. It gets a speed boost, but we go for Scald. Close combat doesn't kill us. GG. I just want to see what it's going for, so I'm gonna go protect. I think it's gonna go for Spore or Mock Punch. Going Rock Slide. Uh, I do think this thing is faster than me, but at this point the fight is pretty much over. We do need to play slightly smart still, but I mean, this is why we have Talonflame. Talonflame comes in, dual wing beat, switching into Relicanth. We're gonna go for a U-turn to get him out of there. Easy clap on the Relicanth. Switch right back into the bird and the game is over. Get absolutely shit on, GG. Wow, dude, wow, dude, wow, wow. There it is. Also, the fact that you cut off like half of my face and made my head look like a thumb is quite the experience, man. I find it very lifelike to that exact description. What, do you think I look like a thumb, dude? This is what we're preparing for. The Mammoth Swine, it's got a uh, Focus Sash, so we have to hit it with more than one thing. So if a double kick from Mega Blaziken at the level cap of 79 can kill it, then great. I don't think that's gonna be the case though. So that is why we're preparing our Steely Boy. And then for the rest of this fight, we have stuff like Typhlosion, we're gonna have our Drapion, and we're gonna have plenty of stuff to deal with Houndoom. It's just gonna get a little weird. Cause then right after that, it immediately sends us into this fight without the ability to heal. 
So we have to make sure we're ready to fight Hatterene. And this thing is going to probably go for a Trick Room nonsense thing. So that's a whole thing. And then we have Rhyperior and Honchkrow and Mawile. So Politoed goes pretty huge here. Blaziken with the right moveset. Mega Blaziken can go really huge here. Uh, we could also go like with a Mega Lapras and that might be able to do something good here. But this is why. This is why it's a possible PB. Because if we can beat Archer and Ariana tonight, it would be a PB. I would show you guys Blaine's team, by the way, but his team is actually complete and utter ass, so it's not a big deal. Caterpie evolves into Metapod. Chat, is this true? Is it actually real? Not true. Wow, you guys are fucking idiots, dude. You guys didn't know that? Oh my god. You guys are actually so dumb. Again, this gym leader is... He's pretty free, man. It is a relatively free fight. Shouldn't run into too many issues. All right, Blaine, with your cool heart gold, soul silver swag. <laughs> Look at him, dude. So Drought comes out, which is why we needed stuff with Rain Dance, so we could get rid of the sunlight. Obviously, start with Stealth Rock. We outspeed the Torkoal, so we get basically a relatively free turn coming up after this. And then we're going to see how much we can do with Rock Wrecker. Curious if this actually kills. It does. Wow, cool. Okay. Oh, wow. Charizard's already coming in. That is fine. Why are you already sending in Charizard? I mean, I'll take it. As Pepe NBZ comes in and gets that uh, sunlight out of here. <laughs> now nothing wants to switch into Scald. So we click Scald, hope that we can survive a Dragon Pulls here. Oh, plenty. Oh my God, just so free. <laughs> oh my goodness. There goes the scariest Pokemon on his team. Exeggutor comes in. We're gonna, like, obviously we lose our like, Gale Wings here and he's gonna Giga Drain, but Giga Drain shouldn't kill because we quad resist. And then we can uh, dual wing beat. If the sun was out, we'd have to play this very differently. Oh, we're actually not going to kill it with this. Weather ball is fine. And we should be able to sweep from here. We just spam rock slide until the end of the battle. Probably going to be Cinderace. Typhlosion comes in next. It has to take the stealth rock, which takes... Oh, it has heavy duty boots. Huh. Ah, you missed focus blast, idiot. <laughs> Shit on. I love you though, Typhlosion. You're a great Pokemon. Love you. Great Pokemon. Cinderace comes in, takes the stealth rock damage. Rock slide kills it. And, oh, nice critical hit, dude. Huge. And then the last Pokemon is Sunflora, who also gets annihilated. This fight is just so stupidly free. Compared to like Sabrina, this fight is a joke. That is Blaine. That's all it takes. It is insane how much was put into this fight to make sure that it's just a ridiculous fight. Between adding superpower to Honchkrow, between adding superpower to Durant, giving it Hone Claws, between giving Sucker Punch to Houndoom, there is so much shit, dude. I have a plan, dude. I have a plan, okay? For this fight, S. Cavalier is the most crucial Pokemon on the team. It will kill the Mamoswine, it can tank whatever the Mamoswine does, and nothing wants to switch into a full power attack from it, which means Mamoswine should die. Then the assumption is that Houndoom comes out, dude, okay? When the Houndoom comes out, we go into Lapras. Because Lapras tanks those, dude. It simply tanks those. There's no way it doesn't go for Flamethrower, okay? Against a thing that is quad weak to, to fire moves, okay? So we simply protect to make sure it's going for Flamethrower and then swap out. It's that easy, okay? Lapras mega evolves, destroys Houndoom with Boom Burst, slapped. Honestly, Lapras might kill the rest of that team with the exception of Durant. Okay, Durant could be a problem because Superpower I think can kill because if it's Durant, we can go into Galissapod. Even with Life Orb, it doesn't really have much to hurt our Galissapod, okay? So Galissapod can stall, it can, it can, probably win a 1v1 against Durant with how I have it set up, should be able to make that happen, okay? And then Mimikyu is the one Pokemon on this team that is a little bit frustrating to have to try to deal with, but our Drapion pretty much destroys this thing due to the fact that we have full defensive investment. We're gonna have some tanks, dude, okay? And that should let us get out of that fight losing no more than maybe one Pokemon. We should have five healthy Pokemon in some capacity going into this last fight. Again, S. Cavalier has to survive. It has to, it is crucial that S. Cavalier survives against the Hatterene, okay? So that way it leads against Hatterene, which I, I feel like I've prepared enough to where I should be able to have that happen. 
because it kills the Hatterene before Trick Room can go up, because I'm assuming this thing is minus speed. Either way, if it goes Trick Room, it's negative priority, so it doesn't matter. We, we'd kill it. Then things get a little weird. I've specifically... <laughs> prepared Drapion and Escavalier to both have abilities that block critical hits specifically so we can take down Honchcrow. Rhyperior dies even with solid rock and weakness policy. This thing gets destroyed by Politoed or Lapras, either one. As long as we hit it with a water move, this thing is toast. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't have good enough special defense. Mawile, we have Typhlosion specifically for. At that point, we just sack something to then safely bring in Typhlosion, who will one-shot this thing easy peasy with burn up. That's the plan. And then we just try to go for Giovanni. Whether we beat Giovanni or not, doesn't matter. If we lose to Giovanni, GG, we go next run. We'll get to use info next time. If we beat him, first try, blind, pog. Six hours of just brainstorming and prepping for this fight which goes to show you that maybe <laughs> this game uh is like slightly too hard <laughs> but it's fine dude what encounter do i get a moon guest oh my god dude this is for the run everybody for the pb dude Oh, God. So, Mammoth Swine comes out first. The reason we have to go Kongle is because he has a Focus Sash, which means I cannot hit him. I can't kill him in one hit normally. I have to have a two-hit move, which is why we have Double Iron Bash here. All we need to do here is click on Double Iron Bash, and Mammoth Swine should die. That is fine. We tank it. Beautifully done. Beautiful tank. Oh, okay, the flinch there is extremely annoying. That's just bad RNG, unfortunately. Thankfully, we can tank another hit but that is really annoying RNG. Okay, unfortunate that we had to also take an earthquake there. That's really annoying, but we do kill Mammoth Swine, thankfully. That makes my plan a little bit wonk, but it's fine. All right, should be Houndoom. He went to rant. Okay, so he must think that he can kill with superpower or he's gonna go for Hone Claws. I don't really know. Okay, nice, that's good. Superpower is fine here, we tank this. This is Life Orb Hustle Durant, which is why I cannot just safely go into Typhlosion there, but with it lowering its stats there, that's great for us. We can go pretty safely here for, I mean, might as well, first impression's not really gonna do much. I'm gonna go Liquidation, okay. Neutrally effective X Scissor, no crit. Liquidation for damage. Should do a good amount. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Good fucking crit, Greg. Yes, Greg, okay, okay. That is good. Mimikyu is another one that we can kind of tank against. It will likely go for Swords Dance this turn. From what I understand, this thing loves going for Swords Dance. I'm going to make sure we knock it out of its disguise here. Yep, there's the Swords Dance. Now its disguise is gone. We protect to get a little bit more health back before we have to take another hit. It's going for Play Rough. Now the question is, do I just stay in with Gregalina? Has it done its job? I don't think Gregalina dies in one hit here, unless this is a crit. We're gonna go for Sucker Punch for damage. We might be able to double Sucker Punch and kill this thing. If that happens, that's great. That's like ideal. Glissapod has at that point done its job. Assuming we don't die in one hit, we essentially would get a free switch in to pretty much anything we want. Should do half, I think, or more, nice. Question is, does this kill? After a sword's nice, nice, huge. Okay, actually huge. We're going to go flamethrower. Nice, okay. Nice, 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 nice. So far, pretty good. This is where we sack. Glissopod's done its job, we sack. You did good, Greg. You did phenomenal. Great work. Fiery Wrath comes in. This should do, I think, 30 to 40% of our health. Okay, it did about 50. That's, that is fine. Okay, fight number one is down, and that went about as I expected. Again, S. Cavalier losing health there is a little bit unfortunate. It does put us in a little bit of an awkward spot, but I think as long as we outspeed here, Okay, so somehow this thing is faster, which means it's not minus speed. Again, this isn't the worst thing ever. It's not a huge deal. That is a little annoying though, that it's faster. The backup strat is Scorpio, okay. The swap into what? Mawile, okay. I kind of need Drapion to take on Honchcrow, so I can't really let Drapion stay in, nor would it be a good idea to let him stay in. Typhlosion can go in there, but this needs to be a fairy move for that to happen. Should have known it was gonna do that. That makes this bad. It's still doable, 
I think the only play is that we have to sack Lapras. Still doable. We just needed a safe switch into Typhlosion. So they could go into Rhyperior here, which would be a little awkward. I think Flamethrower is more than enough to kill it. But just in case, we are just going to go for Burnout. Nice. Okay, it stayed in. It should be more than enough to kill it. So we lose our Fire Typing here. We, we, we sacrifice our Fire Typing. And now Typhlosion has done its job. Uh, Rhyperior coming in. I think going to spell the end of Typhlosion unless... Yeah, no, I can't stand against this. So what we do is we just go for more damage. Oh, I guess I can't use Burn Up twice. So there you go. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm Choice Scarfed because I thought I might have to take some damage before he actually gets to go in against Mawile. So this is what Politoed's for. This is a better spot because we don't have to use our Focus Sash yet. This will one shot. Has to. Guaranteed. So because we still have our Focus Sash, we are in position to at still at least be able to do something here. Okay, Haunch Crow. We just have to go for damage because we still have our Sash. We just we just have to go for damage. This is going to do... Probably bring us down to 1 HP, I imagine. It actually doesn't, which is insane to me. Dude, if that could have one-shot, that would have been so helpful. <laughs> I have to just do, I think, a, an entire just hard switch because critical hits can't hit Scorpio. And I think I might need Politoed to finish this off. That's perfect that I went for Night Slash. So just to make sure we're okay, we're going to protect this turn to get all of our health back. Okay, now it's doable. It is now doable. Just have to be able to kill Hatterene. Hatterene's best move here would be Dazzling Gleam. We need Poison Jab to at least get it low enough for Politoed to be able to finish off. And hopefully we don't die to one Dazzling Gleam. That would be ideal. Just one shot it. Why don't you? Okay. So here's the Citrus Berry. Okay, Trick Room is great. Wait, that's actually great. As long as this doesn't one shot. Please, please. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, dude, yes, yes. Oh, I'm so glad at Trick Room. I'm so glad at Trick Room. That was so lucky. I should have just swapped into Politoed. I should have just swapped into Politoed. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. We did it. Yes, dude. Oh, that is insane. That's a moment, dude. Holy shit. No, moments are no longer available. Oh, it still said I have one more. <laughs> Do you see now why that fight is so fucking hard, dude? Dude, that was like nerve wracking. I was watching the HP drain on Drapion and I could feel my stomach like turning. Like it was just dropping more and more. And I'm like, please don't do this to me, man. Please don't do this to me. The moment it stopped at 30, my heart was just like, ha! Ah! Like <laughs> now we get the fuck out of here. <laughs>